Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and I'm going to answer question number five from one of the um, past papers from the International A Level at Excel Mechanics M1. Um, this is from January 2015. One of the students has requested me on the channel to answer this question, and these older papers I do by request. So I'm going to go through this question. This question here is about dynamics, um, inclined planes, friction, all those different things are combined in this question. It says a particle P of mass 2 kilograms is pushed up a line of greatest slope of a rough plane by a horizontal force of magnitude x newtons as shown in figure 2. The force acts in the vertical plane which contains P and a line of greatest slope of the plane the plane is inclined to the horizontal at an angle of alpha where the tangent of alpha is three quarters and the coefficient of friction between P and the plane is 0 0.5. Given that the acceleration of P is 1.45 meters per second squared, find the value of X. Okay, so this is a type of question where a lot of um, students, they don't actually know what some of these things mean. And they're not really so critical for you to know what they mean but it's always good to know what you're you know what you're reading here so when it says up a line of greater slope um, and here it says a force acts in the vertical plane which contains p and a line of greater slope of the plane okay line of greater slope of the plane what does that mean well what it means is as follows if you were to look at this from this angle here okay you're looking at it from this view here you'd see in front of you a plane. I'm going to draw it slightly kind of three-dimensional. So you'll, you'll see a plane that's inclined to the horizontal. So that's the, that's the you know, that, that, say that's the horizontal floor, and this is the plane inclined up. Now, your particle P will go from the bottom of the plane, say, and what it means is it's going to be moving straight up the plane, like the shortest distance. That's what it means, the line of greatest slope of the plane. It's not going to go like diagonally, like here and here. So it's going up the line of greater slope of the plane. That's what it means. Okay, so it makes an angle exactly, okay, with the um, with the vertical of alpha. All right, it's the same angle. The angle there will be the same as the angle there. Okay, that's what it, what it means basically. All right, so it means it's going straight up this plane. And it's saying that also the force acts, okay, along the same line as where P is and also in the same kind of direction. It's not going, not acting at an angle, at an angle like, you know, horizontally. Okay, so that's that's basically what this means. Okay, so if even if you didn't understand that, it's not a big deal. All right, it doesn't really affect too much in terms of the question because it's quite obvious from the diagram what we're supposed to do. All right, so now, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to, um, and what I like to always do is I'll, I like to take the diagram and re redraw it a little bit so it makes it a bit easier and I'll show the redrawing of it underneath so that we can um, look at the drawing when we are writing our equations. Okay, so this is the drawing. And what I'm going to do is um, one thing I always like to do is the force like horizontally to a plane like this. I like to redraw this just on the other side. It makes it easier for me to resolve the forces. If you don't want to do that, it's absolutely fine. I, I just prefer to do that for such a force as this. Um, I like to just redraw that force to x newtons. It's a horizontal force. Whether I draw it before p or after p, it doesn't make any difference. It's still horizontally acting in that direction. So that's fine. So I can call this force, um, this is x newtons, okay, acting at an angle of, it's, it's horizontal, right? So then I know that the angle here is alpha, the angle here is also alpha. I'll deal with that afterwards. Let's look at all the forces first acting. So you've got the P, the force X acting on P. You also have its weight acting on it, which is always vertically downwards. And you also have the reaction force when it's in contact with the surface, acting always perpendicular to the surface. Now we have a rough plane, okay? And this thing is accelerating up the plane. Okay, it's accelerating up the plane with an acceleration that we know is one point four five meters per second squared so therefore the friction that is acting is acting down the plane opposing the motion and it's also acting such that the maximum friction has occurred f max have, has occurred because it's moving so the resistive force has got to its maximum possible value which it cannot exceed and you know it starts to move 
All right, so f max is what's acting here. So we can work out the value of f max um, if we know what r is. And then you have its weight, as we said, which is mg. So it's 2 times g. That's the weight, 2g newtons. So here we have all the forces showing that are acting on this particle p. All right. Now, what we need to do in all of these type of questions is always resolve forces in the direction of motion and perpendicular to the direction of motion. And that's what will give you the majority of marks in a question like this. Even if you didn't know how to deal with it after that, that would give you the majority of the marks. Okay, so we need to resolve these forces in the direction of motion and perpendicular to the direction of motion. So I'm just going to draw a little line here. Okay, um, now what we know is that this angle here is alpha. That's the angle between x and the plane because x is horizontal and that angle is alpha. So it's going to be angle alpha there, right? And we know also that this angle here is alpha, as I've discussed in other videos. This is like um, these two these two triangles here are similar triangles. This big triangle here and this this small triangle here are similar triangles because um, this big triangle here has a right angle at the top here and it has this angle over here. And this little triangle has that same angle in this corner and this is a right angle. So they both have the same angle and a right angle. Therefore, their third angles must be equal. Right? I've explained it in more detail in one of the other videos that you'll see in my um, in some of the other uh, videos I've done. All right, so that angle is alpha. So now we can resolve these two forces so that they are, uh, we can look at their components which are parallel and perpendicular to the plane, which is what we want to do. All right, so we're going to take um, this force. I'm going to resolve it parallel to the plane and perpendicular to the plane. I'm going to take this 2G Newtons, I'm going to resolve it perpendicular to the plane and parallel to the plane. Okay, that's what we need to do. So the x newtons, if I, if I, if I resolve it in the direction parallel, parallel to the plane, it's like this has to go into the angle to resolve it, so I'm going to use cosine. So x times cosine of alpha. And if I want to resolve it away from the plane, I'm going to use sine. That will be x times sine alpha. Now, if you didn't understand that, it's kind of like, um, if you think about it, just to make it clear for those who don't understand, I can make this like a right angle triangle from this, where this is the per, this is the side which is parallel to the plane, this is perpendicular to the plane. If I'm looking for to resolve this force in that direction, I'm looking for the adjacent side to this triangle, which is going to be cosine. And this is the, the, the direction perpendicular to the plane, in which case this is going to be like the opposite side to the angle, so it's going to be sine. So perpendicular to the plane is sine for this particular angle because we have to go away from the angle. And here, you've got to go into the angle. Whereas for the weight, it's different. Here, we have to go into the angle for the perpendicular part. So it's 2g times cosine alpha because you can think of this line as adjacent to this angle. So this part is 2g times cosine alpha. And this part is 2g times sine alpha because you're going away from the angle when you're um, you know, finding that component of that force. So now we've got all the components of the forces parallel and perpendicular to the plane. So let's consider perpendicular to the plane first. You have your R acting upwards and now as it's not accelerating in this dimension, it's accelerating perpendicular to that, the resultant force in per perpendicular to the plane is zero. So we can say R must be equal to the forces acting into the plane. Now the X newton is acting into the plane, so it's X times sine alpha plus 2g cosine alpha. Now, because this x is being, like if you can, if we go back to the original diagram, some people say, how come this doesn't have a component up? Well, it doesn't have a component up because it, it's, it's acting like this. So it's going to be pushing this into the ramp, not like relieving it from the ramp. So it's not, it's not like it's like um, being pulled at an angle, you know, away f from the from the ramp. Right, where it will, it will have a component this way and that way. This has a component, you know, this has a component per perpendicular, parallel to the, uh, to the ramp and perpendicular to the ramp into the ramp. Okay, so there's a difference there between when it's like something being pulled by an inclined, uh, like a string, like inclined above the, horizon, uh, above the slope and one that's kind of going into the slope. This is like pushing it into the slope, so have, it will have a component downwards into the ramp. Okay, so that's... Uh, how many, you might be able to clear some doubts from that. So that's that's the resultant force acting um, 
parallel or perpendicular to the plane. Now, if we look at the, the, the forces acting per, parallel to the plane, I'm going to resolve the forces up as positive. Now, here we do have a resultant force because um, it's accelerating. So we can say that the, the resultant force is equal to the mass times acceleration. So the resultant force is the upward forces minus the downward forces. So you have x times cosine alpha, then you have minus 2g sine alpha, and then you have minus f max, and those are all the forces acting on this particle in that dimension, and that's equal to the mass times acceleration. So that's 2 times a, not 2g, 2. 2 is a mass, 2 kilograms is a mass, so 2 times a. Okay, so those are two equations that we have formed which we can now hopefully try to solve. Now, what we need to do is fill in these values. Now, I know what A is. A is 1.45. we got to think about what is sine alpha and cosine alpha. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you by way of drawing a right angle triangle. Okay, a right angle triangle. Okay, just imagine this angle is alpha. And this is a right angle triangle. And the tan of alpha, as they told us, is three quarters. That would mean this would be three and this would be four, opposite of adjacent. And the hypotenuse of this triangle would be five, three, four, five triangle. If you're not sure, that's the square root of three squared plus four squared by Pythagoras. That gives you five. So we know that the tan of alpha is three quarters, and we can now write down what the sine of alpha is. The sine of alpha is opposite over hypotenuse, which is three fifths. And the cosine of alpha is going to be the adjacent over hypotenuse, which is four fifths. So we can take those two values and replace the alphas in here with sine alpha being three-fifths and cosine alpha being four-fifths. And we also know that f max is equal to mu r. f max is equal to mu times r. And we know that mu is 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 r is f max. So I can replace the, the f max with 0 0.5 r. Okay, so let's now um, put in the values that we have. So sine alpha was three-fifths and cosine alpha was four-fifths. So we can take the first equation, we can say r equals, um, that's three-fifths times sine, uh, three-fifths times x plus, and you have two times sine, cosine alpha, and cosine alpha is four-fifths, so it's two times four over five, that's eight over five g. That's eight over five g. Okay, in fact, what I'll do is just to make it clear, I'll just show the steps properly here. Okay, so I'm taking this first equation, I'll call this equation 1, I'll call this equation 2. So equation 1, I'm going to have r is equal to x times the sine of alpha, which was 4 fifths. Okay, sorry, 3 fifths. Let me write this down here. Let's write it over here. Okay, so we have the sine of alpha is three-fifths and the cosine of alpha is four-fifths. So it's, it's going to be x times sine of alpha, so it's x times three-fifths. Okay, um, plus 2g times four-fifths. That's, that's from that first equation, which will give us r equals 3 over 5x plus 8 over 5g. That's R, okay? And from equation two, from equation two, we have X times cosine alpha, so that's X times four fifths, okay, minus two times G times three fifths, minus F max, which is 0 0.5 R, um, is equal to two times 1.45, because A is 1.45. So that's four fifths of X, minus, that's going to be 6g, 6 fifths of g, minus, um, and now what I can do is I can replace the r with this. So I have 3 fifths x plus 8 fifths g equals 2.9. Okay, so I've replaced the, 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 um, the r here with what r is equal to from this equation. And now the only unknown is x. So let's solve for this. So you've got 4 fifths x minus 6 fifths of g minus, now this is like a half. Let's change this to a half so we can keep those as fractions. 0 0.5 is like a half. 
makes it easy to think about it like this. This is like 3 over 10x, and minus and plus is minus. That gives you a half times 8 over 5 is 4 over 5g equals 2.9. So you got 4 fifths x, which is 8 over 5, 8 over 10. 8 over 10 minus 3 over 10 is 5 over 10. So you have 5 over 10x, which is a half x. Um, minus 6 over 5, minus 4 over 5, that's minus 10 over 5g, which is 2g, um, equals 2.9. So you end up with a half x minus 2g equals 2.9. Okay, now we need to find what x is. So we just have to now multiply um, what well we have. We can um, so add 2g to both sides. So you have a half x is equal to 2.9 plus 2g and therefore x is 2 times 2.9 plus 2g and that will give us our answer. So you have 2 times 2.9 plus 2 times 9.8 and that gives us 45. So x equals 45. Okay. Um, yeah. Find the value of x x newtons yeah so x equals 45 and there's the answer to this question all right so 10 marks 10 whole marks and most of the marks would be given by just resolving the forces parallel and perpendicular to the way that this object is moving okay and that's really important um, that you know how to do that and you know how to resolve the forces like the weights parallel and perpendicular to the plane and also the forces acting should always be resolved parallel and perpendicular to the plane. And once you can do that, that will be the majority of the marks. And sometimes you're not sure how you're going to answer the question. But once you've done that resolving, things become clear. Okay, so I hope that was uh, clear there. And um, I hope that helped to the person who asked for me to answer the question. I hope you um, understood. Other questions from this particular paper, which I've answered, will be in the playlist that will appear over here. Other questions from this topic of, um, I'd say, inclined planes and dynamics would be in this playlist over here. Other um, questions, or, or if you'd like to subscribe to my channel in general, you can subscribe to my channel over here. You'll see um, other things like S1, P1 to P4, some IGCSE Cambridge papers also answered. Um, so. You know, you're welcome to browse. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon.